So thanks very much for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, cheminformatics and open notebook science. So before I get started with the whole uh, cheminformatics component, let me give you a little bit of a background about what I mean by open notebook science. So there's been a trend in the past few years to go from more closed systems in research and in teaching to more open systems. So we're all familiar with the traditional lab notebook where all of the stuff that's in there is not going to become public unless somebody actually puts it together and, and writes a paper. And of course, the traditional journal article is more open, but still people have to pay for it to get access to the information. So recently, open access has become pretty popular, and the advantage of that is that people don't have to pay to access the articles. But the format of the articles is still the same as the traditional journal. So when we talk about open notebook science, we're talking about making the actual laboratory notebook and all associated processes completely open in real time, or as close to real time as we, as we possibly can get. So there's also a teaching aspect to this, which I'm not going to talk about too much. Uh, but I do record my, my lectures, and I make them publicly available as much as I can. And kind of an interesting little statistic on that that I found out recently is that uh, I, I make these YouTube recordings for my organic chemistry questions. And the strongest demographic are the older males, 45 to 55. So I would have assumed it would be the students, but there's something else going on here. Very interesting what happens when you, when you make your stuff open. It's really interesting. OK, so I'm not going to talk too much about the details of the chemistry, of the organic chemistry. But just to give you a, a global idea, we are trying to make anti-malarial compounds. So my group is in the middle at Drexel, and we do the synthesis of compounds. Uh, before that, we have uh, Rajarshi Guha at Indiana University, who's doing docking for us. So he's telling us which compounds to make. And once we make those compounds, we ship them off to various places. Uh, recently, Phil Rosenthal at UCSF is kind enough to do testing against uh, falsipane 2, the enzyme that he's isolated in his lab, as well as you know, general antimalarial activity. So we're trying to do this as openly as possible, and that's sort of the idea. Can we do drug development in, in a completely open way? So in order to do this, I'm not going to use one technology. I'm actually going to piece together all kinds of different technologies, the vast majority of which are completely free and very, very uh, well put together. So I will talk a little bit about using a blog, a wiki, Google Docs, CDD, ChemSpider, and even a mailing list still. The old school mailing list actually still has a role to play in all this. So where does this actually come from? If, you've ever, if you're an organic chemist and you've ever tried to repeat a procedure and tried to follow the experimental and found that you just simply couldn't figure out how they managed to do what they claimed they did, that's because there's some information missing. And if you had access to the lab notebook, you could actually see exactly what the problem is. Maybe they made a mistake, or maybe you're making a mistake. And so it's really the question of where's the beef in terms of the experimental. So here's the blog post where I talk about we're making uh, some, anti some uh, falsipane 2 uh, targets. And at the bottom there, in, in red, you see it says, see experiment 150. So when you click on that link, it takes you to our lab wiki. So the wiki is basically just a collection of pages. Each page is very similar to a paper notebook, except that I can have links, I can embed images, I can embed videos, I can do all kinds of things. And I'm just going to give you a sample of what these things are. So I just clicked on experiment 150. It tells me, the, it shows me the scheme. It gives me the objective. If I click on one of the links for the compound, it takes me to ChemSpider. ChemSpider is a free database. It has about 20 million compounds on it, and it's, it's very handy uh, from an, for a, an, an organic chemist because it automatically gives you the inchy key, it gives you the inchy, the smiles. You can search by all of these. You can do substructure searches. So if we keep our compounds on ChemSpider, you know, I don't have to run you know, software on my machine to do substructure searches. And I prefer that because I'm an organic chemist. I don't want to be you know, managing software. And we also have links. You remember I told you about Rajarshi, who uh, does the docking for us? So we try to make that as, as open as possible as well. So if you actually click on, on these links, it takes you to a Google Doc 
that has the list of smiles codes in the order that Rajarshi calculated for this particular docking run. So if you wanted to actually see what he did and try to repeat it or investigate it, you certainly could. And on the, on the paper, so all I'm doing here is I'm taking that long page and I'm dividing it up into sections. So there's also a procedure section typically. And this is something that we'd like to be able to copy and paste when this makes it to a traditional paper. We'd like to be able to just copy and paste that to the experimental sections. And I'm a huge fan of JCAMP that was mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, this is really nice because with NMR data, with JCAMP, you can actually use JSPECView through a browser and people don't have to download any software or even know that there's software involved. It's using Java and you know they basically click on the spectrum, it pops up. And if you drag the mouse across the spectrum, it'll actually expand any area. So this is far superior to printing out you know, endless expansions because you just need to save it once and then you can get your J constants at any point in time. And also, you notice the spectrum, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on, right? And I know that sometimes you see the supplementary sections in uh, papers and you wish that you could expand to see if there's, you know, a rotomer or some kind of impurity there. And here you can, anyone can do that. It's, it's totally open. And ChemSpider, I'm, I'm going to revisit ChemSpider a couple of times because it, it can do some very useful things. Once we've characterized the compound, we can actually upload the spectrum in JCAMP format right on the record of that compound you can expand and you can zoom in to the, the, the you know various peaks you can also upload you know pictures so this is a picture of this particular precipitate you can upload any of the spectra so jcamp format you can get from ir nmr mass spec uh, it's you know it's the most convenient format that we've certainly found to stay open and ChemSpider recently has the ability to predict NMR spectra. So there's a button for, the, for this record, and if you click on it, it generates this spectrum. So I actually put it next to our experimental spectrum to show that you still need to be a chemist, you still need to have some common sense, uh, but it's certainly pretty helpful you know, to use your background and just, just to, to, to get a rough idea of where those peaks should be. I think it's, it's a pretty neat for a free service. And of course on the page there has to be a, a log, right? So it's my job to teach my students how to keep a log in terms of noting what they've done and what they observed. And so, it, you know, it takes some time to figure out exactly what that is, but this is live and it's, it's real. So as things get corrected, you get to, to actually see that process. So finally, and we're still on this, that, that same page that I started at the beginning of my talk, uh, we have the conclusion. This, this Yugi product was obtained in 59% yield. So the nice thing about this is that you, do, you don't have to trust me, you don't have to trust my students. You can go to the raw data, you can analyze the NMRs, you can look at the log, you can see if we made a mistake. Or, and so this is really, you know, I think, how science can be done more efficiently. If we had access to, to each other's lab notebooks, I think that you know we would spend a lot less time repeating stuff that should.